There have been a ton of questions about the Auburn quarterback situation, usage, the rotation. I figured it's time that we get to the bottom of it. Well, Zach, I, I actually just finished crushing some chicken farm, and I am, I am freaking ready to rock and roll. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blockerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. We have a special guest today as I am joined by D. Finley. He is the father of Auburn quarterback T.J. Finley. And man, have you ever seen a start of the season like this one, D? Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not what I expected. Um, uh, not at all. Not at all. I'm just going to be honest. Not at all. Sure, sure. Uh, first things first, you know, with reports coming out, um, TJ's missing some time this week due, due to the shoulder. Can you give us a quick kind of health update? How's TJ doing? Well, you know, of course, I'm not a doctor, and I'm not sure. up there with him, but – um, you know, before we left Sunday, he was banged up pretty bad. Um, he, uh, needed help putting his, uh, shirt on and, uh, he had to eat with his left hand. And, uh, I don't know if people know that he, his left shoulder was injured going into this game. He injured that in the San Jose state game. So okay. he was playing already with one injured shoulder. Interesting. W was he getting treated for that or was that just something he kind of kept to himself? Yeah, uh, he uh, he was getting treatment for it. Okay, gotcha. But I think gotcha. it's uh, uh, I think I know what that one might be. It might be uh, something to do with the labrum, uh, whatever. Uh, is you know, but you know, TJ a tough kid. Sure. So I, I D, I've seen a few of the reports that it it sounds like he's just got to sit for a week and, and it'll take care of itself after that. Is that kind of what you've picked up from talking to him? Well, uh, yeah, you know, from TJ, but I, I, I don't know. I'm going to find out more. As you know, with an injury, um, you you have an injury and you, they do x-rays. Well, you might not really see what's going on because of the information. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to uh, wait a couple of days, ice, let the information go down, and then either re-x-ray or MRI. I would like to know because I, I would really would hate for it to be some structural damage to his shoulder, which – it, that, what it don't seem like that, but you always want to make sure. So I don't know if it's going to be a week or two or three. I mean, sure. I don't know. But like I said, I'm not the team doctor, but I am his father. And, and I, if I have to, I will get a second opinion just to make sure. You know, that's his uh, – if he don't feel – you know, it's based on how he feel. You know, if he feel like it's still hurting or it's still whatever, you know, and – and you need to know if it's structural damage first. If it's, I always used to say, if you're hurt, let's go. If you're injured, I understand. I understand. Yep, absolutely. That makes a ton of sense. So how would you, uh, how would you grade TJ's play so far um, this season? TJ's play, uh, I'm probably one of his hardest crit critics. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not going to sure. sugarcoat it. Uh, I look at, uh, and I'm probably, probably a little harsh on him. My wife had to actually... Uh, kind of shake me and uh, tell me, hey, you're you're his father. You know, everybody else is already critical. You you, you can't do what you did in uh, high school and junior high, and and you know you're not his coach anymore. You know, so uh, the first game, I uh, thought uh, that um, <clears throat> just to be honest, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to straight to the point. You know, I, okay. I'm not a sugar coder. Uh, neither quarterback has really been able to get a rhythm. The in and out is really, 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 whether they want to admit it or not, I feel uh, affects uh, uh, both of them play. You know, now, um, <clears throat> uh, that's, just, that's just the point. I think that he hadn't been able to really settle in uh, and, and, and really get a, a full game behind him. And, and if, you know, if anybody asks and say, hey, what, what do you mean? Well, TJ has had 53 out of the three games. 53 run slash or pass. Mm -hmm. Okay. Robbie has had 51 run slash or pass. That sounds pretty close to 50 50 to me. It, it is pretty close to 50 50 because the combination is, you know, Robbie gets some sprinkled in with the starting offense throughout the first three games. 
And then he played a lot of the second half against Mercer in this past week against Penn State. And when Robbie's been able to run the offense, there hasn't been that that switching in and out. Robbie's kind of had it throughout the end of the game. So um, that adds right. up. Right, yeah, when Robbie had it, Robbie was able to settle it in, you know, and, 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 and really just not look over his shoulder because, you know, TJ's out, done for the day. Well, a quarterback looking over your shoulder, I don't care if you're a, a, a manager at your job and you're going for a director's position and you got another manager going for it with you, you're looking over your shoulder. You're wondering what, you know, so that, that that's, that's really, you, you need to be embraced as the QB1 and I'm not looking over my shoulder and I'm going to ride with you. You know, and then and then if it got to the third game and it really just wasn't productive at all, then okay, well, let, let, let's try something different. But how can you really try something different now? Uh, and it's been 50-50, so who's at fault? Yeah. Were you surprised that the quarterback rotation thing went into the third game? I was surprised it started in the beginning. Okay. I mean, you say I'm QB one, then I'm QB one. I, you tell me what system over your whole time watching football that had a two quarterback system that actually worked other than Drew Brees and Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill had certain packages, you know, and Drew Brees was a forty year old veteran. Sure. Yeah, no, and, and so I was, I was, it, I was it wasn't totally, anywhere, I, you know, it wasn't I anywhere close to 50 50 for that either. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, if you have, if you have a player, you're getting him some reps and getting him some packages, well, yeah. let's go with a goal line package. Let's go with a, uh, 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 you know, a certain situation package, but the in and out, in and out, man, I, uh, uh, you know, and I got this, this, this right here that I got in front of you. If I would, if if people and fans would just take their time and quit looking at oh what, what, what happened, and actually go play by play and look at the play calling and the play execution when it was asked and needed, they would change their minds. Because at the be honest with you, TJ at halftime was on his way to a three hundred yard game. He had one hundred fifty two yards and thirty yards rushing. And I think it was four for four for five or three for f four on third down. Mm -hmm. So you tell me, is that fair to put uh, another quarterback in? I don't even want to name names because people say I'm dropping da da da. I'm not against nobody here. I'm just talking about the situation of being a quarterback. Mm -hmm. Okay, you go in one quarterback go in, <clears throat> and he runs a play, he loses a yard. He runs a play, another play. It gains two yards. You had third and eight. Now I'm asked to go in the game and convert when they know I'm passing mm -hmm. on third down and eight or third down and 15. But he did that consistently, though. Then what else you want to ask, ask, ask? I mean, what? Well, TJ would convert the third and 14 stands out to me after that situation. And, and then, then he, he would come out again. Yeah, that's tough. So, I mean, I mean, I, I'm just. I'm just uh, calling a spade a spade. I understand. Um, uh, uh, and I hope that people understand this is coming from me. TJ don't even know about our interview. Sure. Uh, we haven't talked about it because uh, one thing, I mean, I, I can represent myself. I'm talking, I'm talking just like a, you have uh what's his name? Mike G. Come Mike on. G. Hey. Let's go, Mike G. D, I, I want to get your thoughts on, on what you refer to as right in front of you and some of the play-by-play -play in, in just a moment right here on Locked On Auburn. We got a new partner throughout the Locked On Podcast Network, New Genix. You remember when winning felt easy? That's because when you were younger, you were at the peak of your testosterone production, what some have called the winner's hormone or the man hormone. Wouldn't it be nice to get that winner's edge again and that old swagger back in your step? Well, Nugenix Total Tea contains key ingredients that have been validated in five clinical studies shown to boost free testosterone levels in men. Nugenix Total Tea is the number one selling testosterone booster at GNC, and it also can help re-energize your life and help you get back the powerful, confident, good-looking warrior that you lost 
over time. Now get a complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total T when you text college, C-O-L-L-E-G-E, college to 231231. Text now and get a bottle of Nugenics Thermo, their most powerful fat incinerator ever with key ingredients to help you get back in shape fast. Absolutely free. Text college to 231231. Text college to 231231. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends at Alumni Hall. Alumni Hall is the place to buy all of your Auburn gear. That is where I got this shirt. That is where I got some of the things behind me uh, and a lot of the Auburn gear that is in my closet and throughout my house as well. If you're an Auburn fan, you need to check out our friends at Alumni Hall. And I've got listeners that have messaged me saying thank you for sending them to alumnihall.com because you don't have to live in Auburn to buy officially licensed Auburn gear. Just go to alumnihall.com and they will get it shipped to your house pronto. AlumniHall.com or the physical store in Tigertown. Dee Finley, our guest today, talking about the quarterback play and just the general offense happening so far for the Auburn Tigers this season. So you mentioned and referred to some of the stuff in front of you, including the play-by-play. What are some of those things that kind of stand out to you when you've looked at kind of what's happened over the first three games, Dee? Let's look at this. So so people will say, okay – well, um, I, I'm just going to run through a few of them. Yeah, please. First play of the game, hand off the tank, tank positive yard. S- play two of the game, they bring Robbie in immediately. <laughs> Comes in, hand the ball off the tank, positive yard, first down, good. Play three, TJ come back in. Um, uh, threw a pass to Johnson. First, you get gain one yard. Okay. Uh, I give them uh, credit for trying to maybe make do a little pass on first down because everybody in the country know that we're going to get about a tank on first down. I mean, um, I, 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 I would love to pl- coach defense against uh, predictable offenses. Right. So, uh, third down and seven, blitz, move up in the pocket. Pass the ball to the, to the middle of the field to Jackson. First down. You know, I can yes. keep going. And it's like, I mean, the first half, we, we moved the ball very well. And we didn't finish in the, in the, in the uh, red zone. Okay. But if you go to the red zone, let's look at the red zone play caller. Okay. Who, who, who can you blame when they're in the red zone and every play was ran of what I told you to run? Right? What do you, what do you mean? What I'm saying is, if if you're my if you're my uh, coach, you tell me to run a play and I run it, and I mean it don't work. That I re- I, I mean, is that execution or is that wasn't the right play? The post game presser, um, he blamed on an execution. Well, okay. Give me just a second. Yeah, no, I, that's fine. That is totally uh, fine. We're talking, we're still on red zone. Is that what we're still talking about? Yeah, well, uh, like I say, we was that I went down the first list of uh, how, how many pages of notes do you have? That's impressive. Yeah, I got about six. I stayed the whole game. I love Cause it. I, I, cool honestly, I stayed the whole game because I was disappointed and I felt, I've, I felt like the average fan looking at it in live motion that, dang, TJ just didn't get the job done today. You know, I'm like, man, it didn't get the job done today, but everything goes into play here. Mm-hmm. You know, now did his turnovers help? No. No, sure. But do but why did he get turned over? Both of them was a, a, a blitz that wasn't picked up, and it was a, a sack fumble. The interception was one that was uh it was a wrong it was a wrong route ran. Okay. <laughs> then trying to make a play for his team, backside blitz come. Hits him as he throw. He can't get it quite out of bounds. Do make a heck of a catch. Sure. Okay. We talk, we talk about ball security, but last time I saw, I saw an opening game where Matthew Stafford threw three interceptions and he get paid millions. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, that's so true. when when do we expect these 20 year old, well, my son 20, uh 20 year old <laughs> to to not make uh any be, be perfect and not make any mistake, especially when you're trying to make a play. Mm-hmm. Okay. If, if the, the guy's not allowed, if, if he wasn't being sacked, there's no fumble. 
Right. If he wasn't being blitzed constantly, there's no fumble. One of them was by the best, their best pass rusher. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I watched it. It he got his hand in on TJ as TJ was throwing the ball. It didn't quite get going for it, but it was getting ready to go for it. Fumble. Sure. Okay, so you got you can't just say, oh man, he turned the ball over three times. What what happened to allow the turnover? They forced it. So what do you uh what do you make of like the decisions and the the play calling in regards to passing patterns? I mean, everything's 10, 15, 20 yards downfield when TJ's getting hit every time he throws the ball. You took the words out of my mouth. If uh if a team is blitzing you that heavy, did you see a slant? I didn't see hardly any short passes, D. Okay. Well, I, I'm just I'm just saying it was no slant. You had no bubbles. You had no screen passes. You had one or two, maybe. You had one one when Robbie was in there. Yeah, it was one when Robbie was in there. Um, uh, you didn't have your drags going across the middle. Uh, I mean, nothing to bail your quarterback out on obvious passing downs. Obvious passing downs. Second eight, second and 11. Well, hey, they pin their ears back and say, hey, let's go. And I think I told him I gave him credit. I think he moved his feet well. He showed it. He showed he actually showed me a, a, a little something that I, you know, I hadn't seen because he usually stay in the pocket, you know, get rid of it. But he wanted to win that game. Yeah, no, he he moved pretty well. That third and 14 run was, was extremely impressive. I don't think there's yeah. any question about it. And then he was he was subbed out right after that. So, right. D, D, let me ask you this, because all we heard, not all we heard, I'm being dramatic, but we, we heard it a ton. Throughout fall camp, we heard it from defenders. We heard it from offensive coaches. Really talking about the emphasis of getting the ball out quick and how you know Where, defenders were you know when they were made available to the media, they were talking about it was frustrating because like they couldn't get to TJ in time because he got rid of the ball so fast. Was there been? Uh, yeah. So I guess my question to you is like I, I assume all that was true. I don't know why they wouldn't just say that if it wasn't true. So do you think that? They're just not calling that in games. Obviously based not. Your conversations you with, yeah, I mean, so based on your conversation with TJ, you know, why do you think? Why do you think that's not in there? I, I I try not to I try not to talk much to TJ. I let him focus. You know, as sure. he becomes a young man, I'm trying to you know I let him focus. I let him do his thing. I send him scriptures. I uh, send him motivational stuff. That's it. I don't talk to yeah. him about game planning or nothing like that. He talks about enough with them. You know. <laughs> so I try not to uh, be another. F- and I'm trying. I'm I'm being dad. You know, son. You know, you did your best. You know, I'm I'm being cheerleader basically. Sure. You know, because enough people is coming at him about this, that, and the other. Well, you know, everybody, everybody can see that we we, we did no short game. Mm-hmm. You should make them pay for that blitz bad. We did it one time. You remember right before the end of the half when uh, we hit Tank Bisbee out. I mean. Get the ball in his hand. He wasn't getting none from the line of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. Find ways to get it in his hand. Get it in his hand. He take it all the way to midfield. And penalties killed us. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Do you think the penalty situation, do you think that will go down over the course of the season? Or do you think that's just kind of the way it's going to be? Uh, I think it's going to go down. I, I think, you know, they have, honestly, they have to get better. That's the worst I've seen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it has it has to go up from here, right? Uh, I would hope so. I would hope so. Yeah, if, if, not, go, if you go into lower than this, we, we, we pretty – it's pretty. But, no, I've seen – I mean, I've seen these guys play. It just seemed like uh, – uh, no, it's just like sometimes people just got stuck in mud. They, they energy, they're ready to go, but it's like it's just not turning yet. That's mm-hmm. what it just seems like. But, you know um, – uh, it's, it's, uh, it's tough. And then we got a tough stretch coming up with, <laughs> with <laughs> yeah, no, so. I want to, I want to ask you about what's coming up ahead in just a second. D if, uh, if you don't mind sticking around just for a second, today's show is brought to you by bet online, bet online is your number one resource for all of your sports betting info this season. Looking at the Auburn related lines this weekend, Auburn is a seven point favorite against the Missouri Tigers. I believe the over-under is 49 last I checked. So be sure to check all of that out. 
for the latest player developments, team matchups, news. I've got podcasts, in-depth analysis. All of it is at Bet Online. That is where the game starts. A few minutes left with D. Finley, the father of TJ Finley, Auburn quarterback. And D, thank you so much for for your time as we record this yes, in the sir. evening. Yes, uh, I, I really, really appreciate it. So, um, I guess once TJ was aware uh, that okay, you know, he, he he's a little banged up, so he's going to miss some time. How do you expect the job to be handled moving forward? Well, I would hope now. Now he was named QB one. Mm-hmm. I would hope that being that he was QB one and it was pretty much a 50, 50 split. I would hope when he come back, he would get the, he would get assume his position, you know, um, um, as where it was at, which I don't see who has done what to lose. What? Right. I mean, would you agree? I mean, yes, I mean, I uh, I mean, TJ got, I think, four turnovers or five. Robbie got three. I mean, they both didn't turn the ball over. I mean, uh, TJ is throwing for 60, 63%. Uh, Robbie is throwing for 51%. Yeah, I think okay. TJ 63% is something that people aren't talking about. Th- not at all. Yeah. Not at all. He's been, I mean, you got to think about, you know, you know with that percentage, you got you to gotta include drops. You got to include... Uh, miss route running. I mean, you know, di- miss cues. Sixty three percent is. I actually was uh, with the time he's had. Think about it, TJ hadn't played a full game to himself yet. No, you're right. You know, not, not this what if, season. I mean, yeah. what if? I mean, what if he had had? Got, okay, he gets the Mercer game. Okay, you do okay, or or he or he he, he gets hot. You saw where he got hot against San Jose they State. Mm-hmm. A quarterback has to get in a rhythm, right? He has to get in sync, and 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 we've only threw the ball with TJ forty one times, I think 41, 41 times in the air mm-hmm. in three games. You got Mississippi State put forty five up in one game. That's why their receivers and the, the the quarterback is comfortable, and when it's time to make a play, they can make a play because he's comfortable, right? And he's not looking over his shoulder. So I, I assume you were involved with TJ's decision to one enter the portal when he was at LSU and then and then come to yeah. Auburn and, and I, I assume that um you you all of you kind of either talk to Harson or talk to you know somebody on Auburn staff. Is, is this the type of offense that you thought would be run when Finley chose Auburn? Um no. I just honestly know I I thought that uh, the first year we saw the offense that was, you know, it was well, it was told that it was Coach Bobo offense, you know, we, uh, you know, so it was tailored. You know, you think about it, you had Bo. We didn't come in here saying, oh, we're going to knock Bo off and, and start. We was prepared to sit a year and was expecting Bo to have a good year. And then I, honestly, we was thinking Bo would have a good year and declare for the draft. like. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of a lot of kids do. Then it would be TJ turn, take over, you know, and sure. and, and 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 go from there. Uh, but uh, we've had uh, what people don't understand though is TJ done been through already in the short little career five offensive coordinators. Huh. It's that's just crazy. no, yeah, that's difficult. That's no, but guess what? He has this offense. Uh, down pat, it don't take him long. TJ is very smart, and uh, his uh, his his football IQ and everything I would put with the best of them, you know. But yeah. I, I never worry about that. But I just I just didn't. I thought we was we was gonna um, pass the ball a little more, um, and then which opened up the run game, especially again the first two games, you know. Um, I thought we was gonna target that kid. Um, he's a long kid. I think he's number fourteen. Landon King. We, he made that heck of a catch. Yep. And then we don't we don't target him no more. The rest of the game, you had a goal goal line situation where we went to Cedric Jackson, shorted the goal. I would rather throw a ball, jump ball to number fourteen. Sure. But then yeah. also, you still gotta have time to do that too. Right. No, I, I think a lot of Auburn fans want to see more. 
of Landon King. Um, I don't think there's any question. Yeah. Um, any question about I like that. him. Do you do you think this? Do you think the team still believes in in what they need to do and what the coaches are are, are asking them to do on Saturdays? Uh, yeah, I think I think they rally they rally up, you know, and and uh, you got to understand, and uh, let's not let's not just beat around the bush and talk. A lot of them kids are getting ready or trying to raise their stock for the draft. They're trying to make go make a living. Yeah. So, I mean, you got to understand, we, the coaches, they, hey, they, they getting paid. They get, getting paid millions of dollars. These kids are hungry. They, they say the NIL don't open up. Man, don't everybody get NILs. You know? So let's, let's be honest about it. These guys are playing for their, their career. And, and, and trying to get to the league. So they're going to rally themselves if, if nothing else. Right. You know, they have to go out and perform. They, I mean, it's a lot of them that was projected draft picks on this team. Yeah, there's a bunch. So, I mean, I don't think, I, I don't think you really, I don't think you really got to hoorah somebody like that tell, to tell them they, gonna, they got a chance to go make millions of dollars. Yeah. But I mean, th- there, there's just so much outside noise right now. Around this it program, is. Um, you don't think it's seeping in at all? Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, uh, I would say that y- you try to block it out, okay? You try to block it out. But when you have so much that's happening, and then, um, you know, some people throw some people under the bus and this and that and the other, you know, want to blame this, you know, and that's why I came on. It's like, oh, well, are we blaming this on TJ? I didn't know there was an iron team. Yeah, I mean. And then when I looked at his numbers before he got hurt, TJ mm-hmm. got hurt on the play. The third TJ and 14 run, right? Play, uh, TJ took 54 snaps. 54 snaps in that game. He got hurt on the play where it was play 40 right before the half, 50, 51. 51. Well, long story short, the play where he drug several players on another third down and long. Mm-hmm. He took off running and he, you know, told it to a couple of players and he knew where the first down was at. He fought for the first down. That's where he heard his show. You can see it on TV. He comes up. He's doing this. And that was right before the half. So to come out after that, looking at how he felt Sunday morning, I don't know how he went back out there. So must have been adrenaline. Must have been. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. So did he. Um, so, I mean, that, that was discussed with him and the coaching staff, though, right? I mean, yeah, co- I mean, I have nothing to, nothing to do with that. And, and as you yeah. know, TJ is uh, 20. Uh, he's an adult, so it ain't like high school where I can go in there and say, hey, no, my kid's not playing. <laughs> you know, that's not my call, you know, but if TJ felt he could go, it was worth giving him a shot to go out. He went out and actually uh, uh, the first the first drive went three and out, but they handed the ball off twice on first and second down. Right. Yeah, okay, bail us out on third down again. Yeah. So is that, is, that, is that on TJ by itself? Yeah. The, the thing I don't like about that situation is he then gets taken out and a lot of people, I mean, they're not going to like publicly say, oh, TJ hurt his shoulder. And so then, you know, when Robbie plays exclusively after that, it looks like he benched. It looks like he's benched. And then he's got the chance to say, Coach Harson has a chance to say, oh, okay, well, you know, TJ got banged up and he said all the quarterbacks and he did. were fine. And he did. Yeah. That's disappointing, and he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, interesting thing because every, every mean, media member in the room knew what was going on. It's like, I okay. mean, on TV they saw it. They they talked about it all during the TV when it happened. After it happened, um, I'm telling you, it, it just and then what it was going to look like to me. On the outside looking in, just like you guys, I'm sure. I'm I'm not I'm no insider. I don't have I'm no I'm not in the locker room. I'm not. Your son the is the quarterback. In, I, your son is the quarterback, though. He is, but like I told you, if I'm on the outside looking in, yeah, 
even though he's a quarterback, this is how it looked to me. You you being benched. Mm-hmm. It did but how are you being benched? And it's been a 50-50 split on the st- – you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Bench totally. both of them then. Right. That's right. what I'm saying. Bench both of them then. But you named him QB1. Shouldn't he have got a full opportunity to prove that he wasn't QB1? Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't seem like he's gotten okay. that yet. And, and, and I hope he gets that when he, when he comes back. Um, well, you know, if it, it will be, it would be the fair thing to do. It would be uh, what what you normally see in the NFL. I know we not in the NFL, but they they make money like off of off from like the NFL money. But uh, you would hope that um, uh, they can wave the wave the storm of the next game or two or how many ever he's supposedly out. Yeah, I don't know, TJ. I don't know if TJ. I don't know. He he thinks he's Superman sometimes, and and I tell him, you know, if you're not a hundred, not not a hundred percent, but if you ain't able to do certain things, don't go look worse. Yeah, yeah. If I was six seven and as big as him, I'd probably I'd probably feel like that too. So uh, <laughs> I I don't blame him for uh for feeling that. I mean, he's a tough dude. He is a tough dude. D, before I let you go, and once again, thank you so much for giving me um giving me about a half hour of your uh, your evening. Yeah. I know you got a lot of notes. Is there anything else that you kind of wrote down or observed that we hadn't got a chance to to touch on? Uh, no, I, I really, I think we really covered everything. The okay. reason why I took notes because I didn't want to be talking uh, blindly. Sure. Yeah. You, you know, I didn't want to be saying something that somebody can, else come back and say, "Well, his dad on now just taking up for TJ." No, I, I took the numbers that actually happened, and we discussed them. Yeah. And I and I, I'm looking at a, a before TJ gets hurt in a in a, in a uh, at the end of the half, I look at a quarterback that's on a, on his way to a 300 yard day. Mm-hmm. Right, right. He's 152 yards and 30 yards rushing. While um while I have you, D, and you may have heard me say this already. It sounds like you watched the show, which I really really appreciate. But mm-hmm. over the summer, when another quarterback says we're not saying their names, that's cool. Well, another quarterback was posting workout videos and everybody mm-hmm. in the Auburn fan base w- w- was super jazzed up about it, really built up his hype. And I've talked about this before, but it's like if I was TJ or another quarterback in the room, I would have sprinted to the practice field and got somebody to video me doing it. And he did not yeah. do that. What did he do? He kept working in silence when nobody else was watching and he won the right. job. And that right. really, really impressed me. That talks about his character, and so props yes. to you as a father for um for instilling that in him. Props to you. Thank that, you. I, thank I, you. Um, I, 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 that was really really impressive to me. Yeah, and I, I saw those videos too, and I'm like, you know what? If uh, let let I'm a type of person that this was real quick at, at LSU. They have a system in which they grade the quarterback competition. Okay, and if you do it right, the one I mean. It, me and you, if we, we take a test and I make a 90, you make a 91, I, I beat you, right? Sure. So they had categories in this, percentage, drops. That, I mean, everything was analyzed. Mm-hmm. And T.J. Finley was doing great as a freshman in that competition. So then all of a sudden, new categories started coming up. Then all of a sudden – not only new categories start coming up, now certain people ain't participating in certain drills. So how is that apples to apples? Mm. All we want, all we want is the fairness. The fairness. It's all I all, all you ask for is to be fair and be logic with uh when you tell me, okay, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, and be logic with why and have uh, a data behind it. Yeah. I'm a data person, you know? Sure. Yeah, I, no, I, no, I, no, me no, and my no, wife, no, we no. own a um, rural health clinic here in uh, Hammond, Louisiana. Yeah. Been open for over uh, 10 years. Uh, and I, I I run the finances. I run the business part of it. She runs the uh, medical side. She's a doctor. Sure. And um, one thing we do go by is numbers. Mm-hmm. So I think you can't argue numbers. Yeah. No, you can't. You can't. No. Hey, thank you so much for your time, man. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. And I appreciate you. And I, re- I want to let you know I respect you because you had your opinion on um, 
you know, we're not going to say anybody's name, but you had your opinion and, and everybody else did too. I thought Zach and, Calzada was going to be the starter. But you yeah. kept it football. Yeah, sure. And I appreciate that. A lot of people don't keep it football. They take it personal. They they take it to the top about the character and everything else. So I respected what you were saying. I could, I mean, I, I'm not getting mad. That's, that's, your, that's your opinion, you know? That's sure. what you see. But sure. the truth, if it's fa- done fair, the truth come out. Yeah, no, I, I but, think you know, so. Life is not fair. Things are not fair. Sometimes even if you look at the judicial system, it's not even fair. So, I mean, yeah, you can have yeah. all the proof in the world, and they still say you're guilty. <laughs> sure, sure. No, I, I understand. D, thank you so much, man, once again, and uh, hopefully we talk again soon. Yes, sir, anytime, anytime. That is D Finley joining us, talking all things Auburn quarterbacks. Um, really, really appreciate his time. We'll be back tomorrow right here on Locked on Auburn.